everyone and welcome to Collider Video's Supergirl Recap Show. We are so excited to be here, the four of us united together as one mega Supergirl. <laughs> <laughs> I am Akaori Take and you can always send us your comments and your questions at hashtag Collider Supergirl just in case you want to get your questions heard here where we can answer them later on during the show. But first we're going to introduce my lovely co-host starting on my right. Clark Wolf is dead. I'm Martian Manhunter. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Hi, guys. Nice to see you. <laughs> and uh, on my left. Hey, guys. It's great to be back. I'm Carly Garso. And I'm Britta Garso. <laughs> All right, guys. So we are recapping episode seven. A human for a day. Is that what it's called? Human for a day. Human indeed. for a day. Um, I wonder what it's like to be alien for a day. I, I was be. thinking that. <laughs> like, oh, clever take on a, uh -huh. like, everyone wants to be a superhero for a day, but we'll never get that chance. Yeah. Or maybe we're all superheroes. Yes. Oh. That was the moral of this episode. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's true. That's true. We all are. So here's what we're going to do. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about things that we loved about this episode, and there's always things that we really didn't like very much. And after that, we'll take your Twitter questions. So, um, guys, overall thoughts of this episode before we get into it. It was my favorite episode so far. Really? Yeah, I really loved it because of the theme, like we were saying. Exactly. They were all superheroes and they kind of came out of their shell and stepped up to the occasion. And okay. I liked seeing that. Yeah, I liked, I mean, we can get into this a little bit later, but I liked that everyone was kind of a hero in their own right. And it showcased every single like main character. It had like a season finale kind of feel. It to did. Me. I like that. I hope we've got one more between the winter. Uh, the yeah, winter yeah. Winter, so mm -hmm. maybe next episode will be even crazier. Yeah, Clark, what do you I think? think it will? I think it was really a great episode. Um, I agree. I really liked the theme. I think there's probably a lot of young viewers watching this show, and so I think it's important mm -hmm. to show them that everybody can be a hero, especially when things are difficult and in the mm -hmm. world. And um, but in ter and aside from that um i really 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 loved the final reveal um of of hank henshaw's true identity which we found out was yeah. martian manhunter and i thought david harwood who um is the actor who plays um hank is great and um and i thought his delivery was really sincere and sweet and i liked that a lot it was a very moving I, scene it it's, was. it's almost that um the actor himself didn't really come into his own as the character until he got to reveal that he was john jones mm -hmm. You know? Completely. So he didn't. He didn't seem like, like great to me as the character until this episode. Yeah. He, yeah. He always seemed really cold, which I was like, I guess that's part of his character. He has no family left. This is just who Hank is. But now we see a more sincere side of him, like you said, and I think that he really came into his own this episode, like you said. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to be the De Debbie Downer of this table. I think it was one of my least favorite episodes. Oh. Surprisingly, because I was seeing all these tweets about what a great episode it was, um, other than the fact that we had that big reveal mm -hmm. and it was moving, I thought a lot of the important things that caught me and got me interested was down there um, with Alex and John Jones. Mm -hmm. But the whole entire um, movement with Supergirl losing her power, it just didn't work for me very okay. well. It just felt kind of slow paced. but. Still a good episode. It just wasn't my favorite. Well, and I would agree too that I think that some of the stuff in the main meat of the episode was a little um, disjointed. Yeah. I didn't feel like it flowed as well as maybe I would have liked it to. I mean, I, we can all maybe agree that the overall themes were were good mm -hmm. and important, and um, maybe even the final execution of those were positive. But at the same time, I felt like you know teaming up Cat and Win was a little rocky um it wasn't it didn't quite have like the fireworks that i wanted it to and and you know james and cara have a nice rapport but then sometimes yeah it's just a little weird and so i would agree that i did like the episode but it felt a little um, it just didn't flow as smoothly as maybe I would have liked. Yeah. That's true. I actually really liked that there was two distinct storylines. Let's talk about the positive starting. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, like, I get what you're saying, how it didn't flow as well, but I liked that there was two clear, like, storylines that you mm. could follow. Like, you could go to Alex and Hank and what they were dealing with with Jem, and then you could go to Supergirl and see how she was dealing with the earthquake. Like, I liked that it was separate, and it was probably because... 
um, Kara and Alex didn't really have any dialogue. So that's interesting, but I liked that. I liked that they were on their two separate storylines. It kind of gave them both a chance to shine. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I was going to say I liked that. We usually see them interacting every single episode, teaming up. And I liked that Alex kind of got to be, I mean, everyone was a hero in this episode, but Alex really was. I couldn't believe how brave she was. She's like, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go out there. I... Like, to me, that sounded crazy because they didn't have any protection against Jem. And so she I was just, a superhero for a day. I know, but I feel like she Strong. always is. Like, she's always so brave. And so it was nice to see her in her element. Yeah, I really like Alex. She me And too. she totally saved the episode for mm-hmm. me, especially since she just had so much gusto and will to find out who the heck <laughs> Hank Henshaw was, yeah. you know? And she went out there. She kicked ass yeah. with Jem. And Jem was one of my favorite parts too. He was a really scary villain. It was like, yeah. he was terrifying. Uh, watching a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> he was. Disappeared. Disappeared. I know. know. Really cool. And uh, it kind of reminded me of Nemo though, like with the fish, with the light. <laughs> okay. <yeah. laughs> Okay, well, Nemo is a little cute. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's the only thing that got me through. Who's thinking That's about funny. Nemo? Uh, Clark, what are some of your positives? Um, I liked uh, I liked most of the stuff that came at the end, actually. So aside from the um, Hank reveal, I liked uh, I liked Astra uh, showing up and her her cronies kind of mm-hmm. just being Crony. like, "Nope, it's on. Don't forget." Um, I was on set of Supergirl last week, and that was one of my questions for the showrunners. Mm-hmm. Was like where's Aunt Astra? And they were like, mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Is there anything that you saw or got from on set that you can tell us now? Yeah. yeah. Well, basically, <laughs> um, it was a really, really great set visit. And one of the things that was very obvious is that the entire cast really likes each other. And that was very cool because you can tell that they're really proud of the work that they're doing. They should and, be. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, they should be. And I think that I also um, visited the day after the Red Faced um, episode aired. Mm-hmm. And that was, of course, the episode last Last week where Kara really kind of comes into her own and like we were saying kind of becomes Supergirl for yeah. the first time um, and uh, and so they were all kind of feeling good mm-hmm. and they were all really proud of that episode and then they did reveal to us the Martian Manhunter um, mm-hmm. twist so we knew and um, but but it was re- I could tell that they f- it seemed like they feel like the show has turned a corner. Mm-hmm. That now we're seven episodes in. We've seen a dark side of Kara, or, or a more realistic side mm-hmm. of Kara. We we've revealed the Martian Manhunter information, and now we can really get into the meat of the story, which yeah. was really promising. I think. Yeah. One thing I will say about Martian Manhunter that they told us um, that Kyler, the gal who plays Alex, told us because somebody asked her about the red eyes. Why is it that he's glowing these red <laughs> eyes in, in front of everyone? Like, you know, he's like walking through the DEO and his eyes glow. And she said, and I don't know if this is true, I don't know if this is canon, but basically she said that it's something that he does, but nobody else can see. So basically oh, it's yeah. just like the audience oh, is getting to see okay. the red eyes, but, you know, it's it's not... There's a name for that in storytelling, right? Where the audience gets to see, but yeah, like it's a the weird word. Fellow though. people, <laughs> I, can't, I can't think of it I, right I now. I like when they use that. Yeah, mm-hmm. but basically, so like hypothetically, if Alex was sitting here and his eyes glow red, she wouldn't be able to see them mm-hmm. glow red. Wow. So that I don't know if that's a lot true of sense, or if that's yeah. like like I said, storybook or um, comic book canon. But I thought I thought I would point that out for our viewers mm-hmm. because I know that's something no, that we've all talked about. Do you have any other positives from this episode? Um, I didn't hate Maxwell Lord in this episode, oh. <laughs> and like I've been kind of hard on him because I think he's a jerk. Um, <laughs> he's supposed to be a jerk, I know. Yeah. So mission accomplished. <laughs> uh, but I I liked him. I liked him out in the relief effort mm-hmm. um, after the earthquake because I felt like it was still kind of sleazy that of course he's there mm-hmm. in the relief effort um but with at his this, bottled water yeah <laughs> like know, it, right? it felt like an opportunity it felt like a photo op but totally. at the same time i liked what he kind of the light he shone on Kara, you know and like made her aware of a lot of important things about who she is and about supergirl and about the fact that people are paying attention and studying kryptonians and stuff like that so i thought that was interesting he has a way of making Kara very uncomfortable and doubt herself but in such a different manner than a uh, cat does where yes. cat yeah. gives her positive feedback in a negative form being criti- critical but good he just says pretty much supergirl sucks you know mm-hmm. and it, every time he says even one little thing about supergirl she just goes nuts 
So I just don't like how he feels like he can do no wrong. Like he's like, I'm out here helping these people because Supergirl isn't. Like there's probably other people helping them too. You know, I feel like he kind of puts himself up on a pedestal and that just bothers me. I mean, at the beginning of the scene when Kara and James go, he's literally posing for a picture, like handing someone the blanket and the water bottle. And he was like dissing Kat for making this a PR opportunity, but he was doing the same thing. Yeah. So it's just a little too hypocritical for me. Yeah. Well, are there any other positives? Yeah, I actually, one of my positives was seeing James back into photography because we haven't really seen that yet this season. And I think being a photographer, or I'm not a photographer, but (laughs) um, I think someone who is a photographer, that's such a cool profession and it's such an art. And I'm like, I'm glad they have his character practicing that again. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i trying to think of some positives. Um, obviously, I mentioned my positives was basically Hank Henshaw um, back there and the whole struggle with Alex and mm-hmm. her being badass and Jem. I thought mm-hmm. everything that happened in the um, down there was really awesome. And so other than that, I mean, that was the strongest points for me in this episode. I did. I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, it's okay. I have, I have another one. Yeah. I really liked Kat's dedication to journalism. <laughs> yeah, sure. She was, she's just such a strong character and she has not even faltered. And so I really like watching her succeed. And she just wanted to share what was happening with everyone and keep everyone strong. And I, I she was a hero as well. Like, and I, yeah. and I, that's a good point because I actually really, really liked when Supergirl goes to Kat and she says, well, that's why we needed you. And mm-hmm. yeah. that was the first time we've ever seen Kat smile, mm-hmm. at least yeah. from my recollection. It was really sweet. So that was really cool. Yeah. So you see Kat always kind of not necessarily putting uh, Kara on the same level by calling her Kira all the time and then a Supergirl she, uh, she kind of looks up to her yeah she mm-hmm. called her my girl in this episode yeah, yeah. So I really enjoyed that so any other positives in this table yeah I wanted to mention real fast I know it was a weird scene it was admittedly a weird scene Which for scene? the one well I'm about to tell you <laughs> um, the scene between James and Kara in the office when oh. he's showing her the photo. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked I liked that there felt like there was some connection there. I felt like they're actually building a solid relationship, mm-hmm. whether or not that's romantic or not, or whether or not that borderlines on romantic. I liked what they had to say to each other. With that being said, then Wen came in, and even though it felt a little out of place, for some reason, his reaction felt very real to me. That okay. that was my positive too. Okay, uh-huh, yeah, because yeah. it felt for the first time I felt like Wynn's crush on Kara mm-hmm. has felt up until this point a little contrived. Mm-hmm. I'm the best friend. I'm in love with the girl. She's in love with the hot dude who you know will yeah. never give her the time of day. It's your classic love triangle. But this was a moment where I actually was like, wow, he's hurt. He's pissed mm-hmm. as her friend and as, disappointed. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so I I wanted to give a quick little little shout out to that because I thought it felt authentic. Okay. I agree. I, I really think it's like because that. between the three of them, her and both of them, it was really showing, like you said, them building relationships, not so much romantically for either, but just how close she is to each guy. And yeah, like he was disappointed because he cares about her. Not necessarily, I mean, obviously romantically because he really likes her, but it was nice to see like that friendship aspect from yeah. both, like and her I and was, James. Too. I was just proud of Wynn for saying something because I feel like he's usually keeps his mouth shut, kind of does whatever Car wants because he loves her so much. Mm-hmm. But he actually said like, I'm disappointed in you because I mean, I think it was a little bit on James as well, but James isn't his best friend. So. But they weren't even really doing anything. They just gave each other a hug. I think it was just kind of, Kind of like a warning, like, you know, don't get into this. That's why for me, I'm thinking, I mean, all he did was walk in on them giving a hug. Yeah, it was just a hug. He could see her face, though. Yeah, and it was, and to be fair, they were alone and they were like, you know, if they were just giving each other a friendly hug, they could have probably done that in the bullpen in front of everybody, but. And it wouldn't have lasted so long. Exactly. I think, (laughs) but regardless, I think too, it was like the, the real, like, reaction in that moment of like if you were in love with somebody and walked in on them even if it was just that like well uh, yeah, you know, yeah. So, exactly. sorry, you know so even seeing them talk it was like mm, yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so I totally get it so okay let's move on to some negatives because not you everything to say. Works. <laughs> <laughs> for me I just think that there's just small things in this episode that kind of drove me crazy that just didn't fit for example how she broke her arm that was my negative <laughs> 
uh, and he just took off his shirt looking all fly. He sure did take off his shirt. <laughs> you know, and he took he off his sure shirt. He sure did. <laughs> you wish he didn't have an undershirt on, huh? I, no comment. <laughs> that would be crazy. I mean, that would be wild if he just took it off and there was nothing underneath. <laughs> so, can I just say too, Lacan Brooks is a giant. Yeah, Lacan really? Brooks is like six five. No. What? And he's like built like a house. I mean, I was really surprised at how broad and gigantic he is that's yeah that he's is a large man he does not look tall to yeah me. very tall mm. and very large so just say and, and, ha- handsome. and handsome yeah and handsome. <laughs> but no comment so it didn't work because he took off his shirt and then all of a sudden it became a sling and then they went straight to the office instead of straight to the hospital but that kind but, of just drove me crazy I, you guys really did not like that they didn't go to a hospital <laughs> they did but explain that they addressed it what did they say in that well she's just like why won't i i still think you should let me take you to the hospital and she was like i'll heal when i'm I'll, super girl yeah Again. But it yeah. should hurt. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't like her reaction to the pain. I feel like if you're experiencing pain for the first time, you're on the ground crying. Like you know what I mean. If you mm-hmm. break your arm, I've never even broken my arm, and I feel pain like a normal person. And I feel like I would be I mean, so hurt that if that was the first time she was experiencing something like that. Her reaction was just not enough for That's me. I'm saying like I've sprained an ankle and I've thought I want to exactly go to the hospital. You yeah. Know? Well, to be fair, I don't think this is the first time Car has experienced pain because keep in mind, kryptonite still exists. That's and true. She That's gets true. her butt kicked often. Um, but I do take your point that like you know if she had really broken a bone, yeah, then probably the reaction would have been a little bit bigger. But I was just gonna say on the on the hospital thing, what is an alien gonna do with a hospital? She can't walk. <laughs> her body is still an alien body just because her powers are not there. Yeah. So is she going to okay, do get an true. x-ray? <laughs> I mean. Like, she can't go to the past, hospital. past, though. She could request one. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Well, in she, theory, she, got a, but she ended up getting a, a sling at the hospital. I guess they have those in their emergency kits. That's a nice hospital because mine doesn't have one of those. I'm in the <laughs> hospital office. Um, so that was like my main negative and just obviously what I mentioned before was that just didn't flow very well for me, mm-hmm. um, especially the scenes with Supergirl, uh, not Supergirl, with Kara. Uh, and I did understand the point that she can be human and still be strong and be her own superhero without superpowers, but it just, just didn't really work for me in this episode. So, And also how she just couldn't get her powers back. And you guys will probably explain this to me right now until she freaked out that you know, she was about to see James fall flat to his death. Well, they just mentioned that she needed adrenaline enough yeah. for like a, for her to feel that sh- she can get it back. But I mean, there were so many moments where she could have had that adrenaline, like a gun being shot uh, to her face. Yeah, she had the to gun to thing, the guy. for sure. Yeah, we should talk about that because That's I true. think probably that scene did not work for... For me. For you guys, I, or for some of you. I, I didn't bother me as much as I think it bothered you guys, but I think <laughs> we should talk about it because I don't know if our audience might know that that is out of the comics. Yeah, and it, um, you told me that it was out mm-hmm. of the comics, but just for me, it just didn't work. I, I, I would never go in there shaking this hand <laughs> And I know I'm not Supergirl, but it just it just felt discredible for these guys, these thugs, I to think, listen to her and be like, okay, I listen. Yeah, I agree with what you're saying. I think what saved that scene was how they like interplayed Kat's speech. Because I think when Kat was talking about, like, we can mm-hmm. be your own hero, you don't have to be Supergirl to be a hero type of thing. And then we see Kara being a hero in her own way. I feel like I liked kind of that montage aspect of it. But if without Kat's speech, I wouldn't have liked that scene very That's much. That's a good point. Well, you know how at the beginning when we were comparing Superman and we said, like, well, she kind of cares more about people? I think that kind of showed shine through in that scene but then you said that Superman did the same thing in the comic which is a little disappointing <laughs> because, yeah. because I feel like it's something she would do because she feels a connection to people like I, I don't know I don't want to say as a woman but no like, she's very connected but I think that that's a really important point to make because so this did come out of the comics um and it came it came out it came recently where basically Superman they call it a solar flare and um and while we were on set the um Ali Adler confirmed she used the term solar flare mm. which is a device introduced in the new 52 so anyway it works pretty much exactly like we saw but 
you know, um, James and Superman are hanging out and, you know, Superman doesn't have his powers and he goes in to try and stop a robbery. Okay. Just because it's in the comic doesn't mean it works on TV. Yeah. yeah. And I think, but to your point, I do think that there is something to the fact that this has been something that has been built into Kara since the first episode. All, mm -hmm. you know, and she's tried to talk down other people too. Mm -hmm. So yeah. in that way, I thought that it actually made sense, you know, because we have seen her try and do this like with every supervillain <laughs> to like the yeah, point where I'm true. just like, stop talking to him. Yeah. But, but yeah, so I do, I mean, I take all of your points. I think mm -hmm. it makes sense that it like doesn't quite work. Yeah, and I, I'm, am I tripping? But did she, her broken arm suddenly didn't bother her as soon as she got into the suit and pretend that she was Supergirl. Just, guess this so. didn't work for uh, me. They just didn't true. dress it. Yeah, yeah, I guess Supergirl can't wear a sling <laughs> when she's in her costume. I mean, it's a really tight costume. Right? Yeah, it's a nice <laughs> costume. She looks great in it. But do you guys have um, other negatives? Or not so much? Um, the scene, that? the fight between Hank and Jem, you could not see anything. Oh, really? Could, I well, think could that was the it? point because you couldn't see anything when he was fighting any of them. It was just flashes of yeah, his face. Yeah, he was no, like Hellraiser, true. like, ah, yeah. holy. This, holy <laughs> I actually that. liked that. I liked that they did it that way because I've never <laughs> seen something like that and it was more terrifying. Yeah. It was scary. It yeah, was pretty terrifying. I just terrifying. couldn't see what was happening. I mean, you kind of assumed mm -hmm. Hank was going to be victorious but I, I, I'm hoping really to see sure. more of Jem he seems like a yeah I'm hoping character. to see more of I don't him know too. about that but <laughs> <laughs> he was very scary and yeah any other things that didn't work for you guys no I think no. other than the flow oh, that's good I, I took it all out in one <laughs> breath sorry guys I'm the negative Nancy it's today. good to have different opinions <laughs> yeah <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we are going to take your Twitter questions, and you guys can always send us your Twitter questions at hashtag Collider Supergirl all week long, all night long, whenever we end up reading them. But here are the lucky three. First one, Jacob Johnson says, how long do you think it will be before Kara knows the truth about Hank? Hmm. Next Monday? I think you're right. Yeah, I, I think you're right. <laughs> I think if it isn't next Monday, it has to be the season finale because I feel like that would be something that would be revealed in like a big way. I think that um, it was pretty obvious for us for a long time as viewers that John uh, that he was John Jones or Martian Manhunter. So it's gonna work into him being an ally and protecting them. So that's why we are probably going to know as soon as possible. I'm guessing next Monday. Yeah. That's true, but I if he is protecting them, there wouldn't really be a need for Alex to for sure tell her. Well, what I think it is, right? is Alex was so like, I'm gonna find out who he is, mm -hmm. I'm gonna find out this backstory. So when she just stops talking about it, Carl's gonna be like, oh, like, what did you find out? You know? I feel like she's gonna be so curious. Because the bigger question is how? Is Kara gonna find out? Yeah, I think. Yes, that is a good question, yeah. and I think that we're gonna get a good answer. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you have any theories? <laughs> I'm, I, I, all I know is we asked Melissa Benoist this question, and she was even very, um, she was very coy. She she laughed real big and was like, "I'm not even gonna tell you because it's so great." Oh, okay. oh I love I it. I think so. I think it's gonna be a okay. fun moment but nice. then it should be soon because they probably don't have too many too many filmed out, I, I out, think right? I think it's gonna be next week too so. oh, okay. but also I would keep in mind the idea that you know um, if you know um, Martian Manhunter assumed Hank's identity for so so long mm -hmm. ago he's had this secret for a really long time yeah. and so Kara who is also an alien like him you know he may may want to um, bond with her or share something yeah, with her you know what true. I mean so yeah. I I think that I think that at the end of the day those three are going to be pretty tight allies Definitely. what did you guys think of the look of Martian Manhunter I loved it I loved oh, it too, me too. Oh, yeah I wasn't expecting it yeah he I just kind of turned red and he just got taller with yeah. that he was almost like beautiful yeah he was yeah. beautiful and the transformation was gorgeous yeah I, I really thought you know especially because our this show gets so much flack for its oh, effects God. which yeah. it's like okay whatever but um <laughs> but <You> go <laughs> well it does it's just unfair but regardless i thought he looked gorgeous yeah. i thought I, I thought it looked awesome it was so well done i yeah. agree mm -hmm. okay next question so does anybody think that astra will join forces with maxwell lord i kind of feel like maxwell lord doesn't work with anyone yeah he's just he has such a big ego yeah i, really I think know. obviously they both 
despise Supergirl, but I don't necessarily see them joining forces because, like you said, like he has his own thing going on. She has her own he won't goal. Even, he won't even help Alex last week. Yeah. Like, he yeah. just doesn't help others. Yeah. <laughs> Unless there's a camera. Uh, I am leaning towards a no. I think that they both have their own motivations and they're, they're not going to intertwine. I yeah. don't think so. What do you think? Yeah, I don't I don't really think so either. I could though, I could foresee a scene where uh Astra approaches or mm-hmm. one of her cronies approaches Maxwell Lord. Um but but I also think, you know, look, as as much as I don't care for his character cuz he's a jerk, rightfully <laughs> so. Um intentionally, I I'm wondering <laughs> if his if he's as all bad as he seems. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I because I know he's not a, he's not nice, but I also don't know if he's like a bad bad person. guy. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't seem to have for me until we get a better backstory of him. He doesn't feel like he has much. But I mean, I was reading on Wikipedia, just Wikipedia, that he's in the comics. He's a little more up and down, yeah. kind of like the type that does things for his own good. Yeah. So who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? I like that. There's a mystery about him. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think you have a love-hate relationship with him. I do, I do. (laughs) That character is a tough character because, I mean, you know, he's, well, yeah, I do. But we'll see. And we were talking before, I think before we started rolling, that, um, you know, when I was on set recently, it it seemed like they all really, really liked the actor, Peter Facinelli. And so I would not be surprised if maybe he came back like as a series regular yeah. for season two, and but who knows? And then have like a more definite if there's like, a storyline. Yeah, and yeah. then yeah. in these both. seven episodes alone, <laughs> he's increasingly getting more obviously valuable in the show. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, even as viewers, we want to understand what's going on with him. Why does he have this vendetta against Supergirl so much? So, all right, last question. Kenny Crowley Jr., now with the big Hank Hanshaw twist in the episode, and Astra back, who we see an all-out war going on forward. It sounds a little similar to the previous question, but... Um Clark, why don't you go first? Well, um, you know, we know that Toy Man's coming, right? Mm-hmm. We That's been confirmed, meaning Wynn's dad, mm-hmm. and he's a you pretty wit. big... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wit. And uh, he's a pretty big villain, and uh, and we know Non is coming. And um, one of the things, so uh, one of the things that we learned uh, last week when we were talking to the show creators was, you know, in the Richard Donner version of Superman 2, uh, when you meet Non, he's been, like, lobotomized. So he doesn't speak, right? Mm-hmm. And he's mm-hmm. kind of, like, dumb. He just follows. Zod's orders. This is going to be a much more intelligent version of that character and I think he's going to be a really big important bad guy this season. So what I'm saying is there's a lot of dangerous forces coming from the Phantom Zone um, you know over the next how we've got 13 episodes left. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of TV so I don't know if they're if they're going the route of like an all out war but we're definitely getting a lot of players involved from a lot of different parts of this universe so I think whatever they're planning they're planning on doing it big. Yeah, yeah I think a war sounds like it could happen but then I feel like they need more people on Kara's team also because she can't work alone. No, against all those people. And I people. think it would just be more in like interesting as a viewer to see her tackle each of those villains individually. As a war, we don't get to see their storylines or anything. Sounds like so, Arrow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I hope there's not a full blown war because I feel like the fighting just just the fighting between the two groups isn't as interesting to watch. I feel that whenever we hear the well, at least for me, when you hear full out war it feels so final once it ends yeah exactly yeah I also wanted to mention too that the tone of Supergirl I can't imagine an ongoing war like this isn't Game of Thrones you know what I mean like this is at the at its core a fun light-hearted um show it's it's not Batman versus Superman you know what Mm -hmm. I mean and so I I think that that yeah so I I just don't think that would even fit with the tone of the show in the first place yeah I I I think that there there obviously will have um some kind of big old battle between uh, niece and aunt, but Mm -hmm. I don't... I can even imagine the aunt becoming good. Oh, really? Uh, I mean, this is just crazy theory, but... (laughs) You know, uh, who knows what's going to happen eventually Mm -hmm. in the future episodes. But if that ever happens, I see it like seasons, seasons later, you know? Yeah, me too. Yeah. All right. Oh, wait. Real quick. 
Were you guys disappointed to find out about Hank, though? Because I felt like he would have information about their dad. Like, I had little hope that her dad. That he was still alive. That he was still alive. Uh, Yes. Well, he did say tonight only one other Other person. person. I caught that, too. Knows his, his, he's Martian Manhunter. Yeah. But then he went on to say, and your dad died. Yeah. And so I was like, ah, interesting. So maybe it's Dr. Danvers as in Eliza. Yeah. Or maybe ah. it's who knows who it is. But I think that that's going to. OK, I hope so, because as soon as like he was revealing everything, I'm like, oh, he's really dead. That's really sad. I know. <laughs> so I hope he's alive. I think he's I think he, I don't know. I know. I guess I guess we don't know. I think he's really I think he might be really dead, though. Mm. I do. Think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we find if he ends up being alive crazy enough, I imagine that would be season finale. Yeah. 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 He's and, alive. Well, and also, I think, <laughs> just to clarify, when I said Dr. Eliza Danvers, I meant like maybe she's the person that knows no. who, yeah. what his true yeah. identity mm-hmm. is. I don't know. I, do you guys think that we'll find out um, who this other person is? And if it if will be, will, there will be like a big reveal about it and this person's important? I think they're going to be important because I don't think they would have mentioned it mm. if they yeah. were important. I think they're planting a lot of seeds. Yeah. A lot. Like we've, we, you know, we've been trying to pay as close attention as we can. Some audience members figured out that he was Martian Manhunter mm-hmm. from the first episode. A lot of other people thought he was Cyborg Superman. And, you know, we still don't know. Cyborg Superman may show up later. Like, we don't know. I, I just had a thought. Do you guys know anything about Lucy Lane? Because uh, Jenna Duan Tatum, she was at my my work my day job and uh she was saying that lucy lane has gets powers so in the comics oh, lucy oh, lane gets com- gets powers and turns into superwoman oh, okay and um we I, i'm sorry i'm like harping on this set visit but no, i think it's I, important no no we yeah. want that to question we're here. got brought up uh-huh. and ali adler the question was lucy lane very famously um gets powers and becomes superwoman have you all talked about you know that possible arc for the show and her answer was yes we've talked about it yeah because <laughs> so, so she yeah. like very so coyly mm-hmm. denied well, Jenna, the Jenna question Duan Tatum basically said, like yeah I'm gonna get superpowers I was like wait what that's why I was really confused that's why I asked you guys if you guys know anything about Lucy Lane so yeah in the comics she does I mean I will say that I'm not ready to have another. I know, yeah, right? no, like, I'm not either. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. A lot more. Maybe, maybe this could be <laughs> more. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. All right, guys. Well, thank you guys so much for stopping over right here at Collider Video and checking out our Supergirl recap after show. Don't forget, you can send over those questions, those comments anytime at hashtag Collider Supergirl. In the meantime, you guys can follow my lovely co-hosts, Clark, where at? You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Periscope. I was like, wait a minute, not Facebook. Instagram, Periscope, and Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> you got this, you got this. Wow. Uh, at Clark Wolf. Clark with the knee, Wolf with the knee, and on YouTube.com slash official Clark Wolf. Carly. You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Carly underscore Garso. And you guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Britta underscore Garso. And you can find me right down there at K-A-O-R-I-O-U-S. Everywhere, anywhere, Twitch, YouTube, uh, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter. That's me. All the socials. All the socials. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the key word right there. And you can follow the whole entire Collider team at Collider Video. Thank you guys again for tuning in. And we'll catch you guys next week. <laughs>